Good morning, guys. <clears throat> Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, I know everybody saw the news. If you haven't, you didn't miss anything. But um, they're going to have the inauguration today, it looks like. Now, unless something happens today, and it very well could. It looks like this is going to go through. A lot of people are upset. A lot of people are jumping up and down. It is what it is, and it's something that's going to happen. But the other people, the ones who want what's about to happen, are doing the whole rub it in your face type thing. So don't be surprised if somebody you know or a family member who is a Biden supporter does that to you because they know you're a Trump supporter. Don't be surprised, and this, this could be the extreme, I don't know, but don't be surprised if violence against people who support Trump goes up because you know we're all identified. Everything you put on social media, everything everywhere you put on it, it it's all... You're identified as to who you are. <clears throat> now, as an American, I'm disgusted and disappointed. As an American citizen, I hate what's happening. I don't want no part of it. Because in the first three months, if, if Biden is seated as president in the first three months, everything that we've worked for in four years will be completely dissolved. In the first six months, there's a high chance some of us could end up in jail. He's already made statements uh, alluding to that. In the first year to year and a half to two years, we will see the end of America. And we will see no more elections. They will just swap between their hands. Listen. The fight's not over, and there are still people fighting for what's right. There are still people standing up for what's right. Plans are being made behind the scenes that we don't know about. But, looking at what we're looking at, I'm just telling you my perspective on this. So as an American, I'm going to use the word that everybody else used, yet they didn't do anything about it. I denounce what's happening. But I will pray for Biden and those who are going to be in power. Because they're going to need it. Whether they're on the side of good or evil or not, they're going to need it. Now, as a Christian, it's a completely different story. As a Christian, I'm elated. The separation of the wheat and chaff we've witnessed visibly happening in our country, in our world. I'm elated. I thought things were going to go a different way. They still could. I don't know. But I'm happy because what is happening, well, there's many things that are happening. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. There are many things that are, that are going on and many effects that are ha coming out of this. But what's happening is showing, it's more separation of the wheat and the chaff, but it's showing who's really in the truth and who isn't. Because a lot of people have given up. A lot of people who said they were standing for what was right took off and ran, went to the other side. They took their paycheck and they ran off. They showed who they really were. They exposed who they really were. And, see, and I think this was what, this was supposed to do that. If you have somebody that you elected from your state to go to Washington and you saw them, they were one of the ones that ran after saying they supported Trump, you know not to vote for them anymore. They're a liar. He, God is, is exposing everyone so clearly. Evil is being fully exposed. He's peeling back the covers and saying, look, look who's there. He's showing us who we can rely on as being truthful and who we can't. He's showing us what the truth is. Now, another aspect of this is God is also breaking our confidence in our attachment to this world. One of the things that I'm starting to do slowly is I'm working through any accounts that I have that I, I don't have to have, I'm deleting them. 
I'm, I'm taking my connection, my digital footprint, and breaking, making it as small as I possibly can. I'm trying to complete, if I can, completely disconnect from this world. I don't want to be attached to this world. And the more I can do it, the better. I, I want to be completely where people don't search me online, can't find me. I'm trying to back as much out of this system as I can. That's my, that's my recommendation to everyone. Pull out as far out of this system as you can. Detach from this world. I think this is one of the one of the things he's trying to accomplish in us is to show us you don't want to be a part of this. This is Satan's world, not yours. You have another place. And he wants us to get as separated as far back away from that as we possibly can. Now, I say that because that's what I'm witnessing. And a lot of people are. But a lot of people are very dug in deep into this system. We need to get as far out of this system. This is not our, this is not our dwelling place. We have another dwelling place. Now, another thing I'm seeing that is coming out of this, the, the biggest one is who's willing to stand up. Who's willing to stand up for truth? Who's willing to stand up for God? Who's willing to stand up for his word? Who's willing to stand up and proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And a lot of people who started out pretty good, sounded like they had it down, have disappeared. Who's going to push to the end? Who's, who's going to continue? Who's going As long as a door is open to be able to communicate, who's going to stand up and communicate? Who's going to try? Back in 2019, I came to the realization that I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep doing this until man shuts me up or God takes me up. I'm still going to do that. I'm going to keep doing that. The one thing we don't want to do is miss an opportunity. And I think what God is showing us here is he's showing us who's really going to stand up and say, this is the right thing. And this is what God says on it. Or who's going to give in. I see a lot of people giving in. I see a lot of people being exposed by God, by their own actions, um, as lovers of money. A lot of people as, you know, many other things. And it's all being exposed openly. It's so easy to see. And this is God's doing. He's showing us who we can trust and who we can't trust. Now it's up to us to pray for discernment to be able to tell the difference. Because it, it hides. Only those with open eyes can see these things. But I had an interesting conversation, very short conversation with someone on another video last night. And they said, I guess the kooks that we all made fun of were right. And I commented back to him and I said, yes, we were. But we wish we weren't. See, I'm one of those people that sounded the alarm about all these things. I'm one of those people that, that constantly told people on every avenue I could about these things. People still look at me like I'm crazy, but they don't respond like they used to. People used to respond very negatively. Now they just sit there and listen because they see it. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to address it. We've been warning about these things for years. I posted on my community tab last night a video of a guy talking about a notification he got from the FCC. See, a lot of people out there have those FRS radios, the family network, whatever, uh, they have um, CB radios. They have those little camp communication things. They got all these things. And they think, ah, I'm covered. I can communicate now and they can't track me. Well, that video I posted on my community tab proves otherwise. The FCC is tracking everything. You have no avenue. And that's proof of the system. There's nowhere you can hide. There's nothing you can do to live in this world and be separate from the system. We have to hope for another world. In that notification, it said they are monitoring Citizens Band. That's a regular off-the-shelf CB radio you can get. Now, the one thing they have a problem monitoring a little bit is sideband. And I've noticed that over the last two years, all the sideband radios have disappeared. 
I find that interesting. You can still get them if you look around. Because sideband is kind of bending down and swinging in between frequencies. A little harder to track that one. But the fact that they're watching Citizens Band, something that actually is almost dead as far as usage goes in the world. <clears throat> 20 years ago, everybody had one. Now almost no one has one. They're still monitoring it. And it said, if you use this in the commission of crimes, basically what they're saying, use it as communication to set something up. They're going to come after you. If they're putting that notification out, then that means they're pretty confident that they can find you. Remember that big um, network of satellites that <coughs> Elon Musk is putting up? Yeah. That's what they're using that for. It's a whole web around the whole Earth. The only places that web doesn't extend to is over the North Pole and the South Pole. Everywhere else in the world it extends. It is completely wrapping the Earth. They can track everything. The last I heard, up to 300 feet underground or water, but maybe deeper. So, this is a good thing. On the outside, it looks like a bad thing. This is a good thing. Because what this means is, this, we're just, we're that close to everything changing. We're that close. And all we got to do is keep watching. And keep praying and keep proclaiming the truth. <clears throat> people get upset or people want to rub it in our face. Well, when people get upset about what's happened, we console them. When people start to rub it in our faces, we tell them, no, I'm happy you got what you wanted. And they'll look at you, what? I'm happy. I'm happy you got what you wanted. Not for you. I'm happy for me. Because my Lord is about to come. And this is an indicator of it. So I'm glad you got what you wanted. Because... You can stay here and you can enjoy that all you want. By the time they realize the mistake, it'll be too late. That's what they want. Go for it. Have it. Now, our psalm we're going to pray today is Psalm 36. I was given this number psalm specifically this morning, just a little while ago. Specifically. Man's wickedness and God's perfection. What we do here, the evils that we do, the things that we're seeing going on. This, all these things are supposed to happen. God lets these things happen because he has a day when he will pour his wrath out. That is the tribulation. <clears throat> there is a, an appointed time for that. But between now and then, between when Jesus ascended and, and that time frame, he's doing a work in the world. He's getting people saved. He's getting people on the ship, on the boat, on the train. And right when he's about to pour all that stuff out, we're gone. How do we know? It says it in the Bible. Now, there are still people that are fighting against this. And, and funny, more and more people are going towards the side of post-trib. Well, post-trib post -trib allows for you to do something to earn your way into heaven. Mid-trib allows for you to do something to earn your way into heaven. Pre-trib takes all that away. That's why they hate it. Because people want to control their destiny. They want to control their salvation. I have no control. God has all the control over my salvation and my destiny. I don't control anything. The decisions I make come to fruition or don't. It is based in God's will. I want God's will for my life because I know that His will makes everything go better. His will is perfect. My decisions, I make mistakes. A lot of them. But when I listen to God and do it his way, it always comes out good and he blesses it. Listen to God. Listen to the Holy Spirit within you speaking and telling you, hey, go do this instead. Hey, pay attention to this. Hey, read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Because the answers you are looking for are not in your brothers and sisters. They're not in the world. They're in the word of God. And we all must turn to that. We all must turn to him. Now, right now, we're having a, going through a purge, a cleansing. These things are happening because God is cleansing out those people who have a false confession. We witness, we're witnessing it happening. How many people used to be on YouTube now disappeared? 
Do you think they had true faith? Maybe. To me, if they did, they'd still be here. I'm just saying. Maybe life changed and God sent them another direction. I don't know. But when things got tough and when the attacks got heavy, what did people what do people do? Run. When they put David in the lion's den, did he run and try to get out? Nope. He walked out in the middle of the lions and sat down and went to sleep. When they took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them in that fire, did they try to run out? No. They stood in the middle of it. And the Lord came to them. When they were there, when they were under torment, the Lord came to them. He'll come to you too. Job. When all that stuff happened to him, did he curse God? Nope. Did he run? Nope. Did he hide? Nope. Found a spot, sat down. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I have no control over these things. I'm going to wait on the Lord. When things got bad for Lot, they had to drag him out. <laughs> so we have examples in the Bible that show us these things. What did the people do when it was time to go? Um... Moses, great example. People always forget about this story. There was a point when Moses was like, you know what, I'm done with all y'all. I'm finished. Now Moses didn't do anything wrong, but the Israeli people that were out there in the wilderness, he's like, I'm done, I'm out, see ya. I'm not going to mess with you guys anymore. Take them and, and y'all go and do what you're going to do. What, did, what was Moses' response? He said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I can't lead these people without you telling me what to do. I can't tell them what to do. I can't teach them or show them or anything unless I have you doing it. I'm going to sit right here and we're all going to sit right here and we're not moving. I'm not taking them anywhere until you counsel me and tell me what to do. I need you to tell me what to do. Did, did Moses run when things got hard? When even God turned his back on him? Nope. He didn't run. He waited on the Lord. You know what God did? God said, that's a good answer, Moses. And he turned around and delivered his people. The same thing is happening now. Now that things are going to get hard, and trust me, they're going to get hard. What are you going to do? Are you going to give in or are you going to wait on the Lord? I've settled it in my heart personally. That the worst case scenario is that I've been identified, and I already know I have. They think they're doing something secret, and they're not. I've been identified, and I already know I have. And I already have, I've already been, I've actually been watched for quite some time now. And there's a whole bunch of stories about it behind that. I fully expect that sometime in the next four years, and it may not happen, but I fully expect, and I've settled this in my heart, that sometime in the next four years, a vehicle may pull up in my driveway and I may be escorted out and taken to a facility or a detention camp. I've settled it in my heart that as the worst case scenario, I may be taken in for my affiliations and who I say I support and what I stand for and my Christian beliefs and put in a detention camp and ultimately put to death. I fully expect that to happen. I've prepared my heart for that. So when it happens, or quote-unquote, if it happens, I'm not surprised. I read God's word. I've seen what happened to people who stand up for what's right. Most of them end up getting martyred. I'm fully prepared for that to happen. I'm ready. I'm also prepared for it in the rapture. I looked down the road, and I counted the cost, and I said to myself, am I willing to go that far? Yes. And all the training and all the things that God has put me through to this point in my life has trained me for this. Do I want to stay in this world and, and live a good life because they say if I back them up that they're going to do that for me? But then I have to live under a totalitarian government? No. I want to live under God's government. I want to live with my Lord. So I'm going to choose that hard road that's going to get me there. It's a narrow path. 
and there could be death waiting for me. I've come to terms with this and realized that that is preferable. Because what they're going to want me to do in order to stay alive, I'm not willing to do. It's going to require me to lie, to denounce my God, to live a lie. No, not willing to do it. Because I know who runs this world. And I know some of the things they're going to want me to do. And I'm not, I'm not willing to go there. I'd rather die for my Lord. So I've prepared myself. I've settled it in my heart that this is a very high possibility or probability. And you should too. Prepare yourself. Be ready. Because what happens is when you're ready for anything, you have joy. And you have peace. Because you know that no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. And you know what's on the other side. That way you're not caught unawares. That way you're not suffering. That way you're not tormented. There are a lot of people who are going to torment themselves. It's going to drive them crazy. A lot of people are going to turn away from God. Now, will he abandon them? No. But he's looking for those people who will stand up. He's looking for the Davids, the Daniels, the Jeremiahs, the Isaiahs. He's looking for the Ezekiels, the Zacharias. He's looking for the Moses. He's looking for those men. He's looking for those John the Baptists. He's looking for those people who, against all odds and against everything else, will stand up and say, this is what's right, you guys. He's looking for those people who will call out wickedness. What do we see today? Most Christians don't even talk about these things in the Bible and miss. I cover as much as I can. They miss it because they don't want to offend anybody. What's more offensive? Not telling someone the truth and they go forward and get punished or telling someone the truth and they turn and get saved. I'd rather tell somebody the truth and hurt their feelings. Because I would much rather be standing with that person in heaven and apologize to them for being rough, coarse, and mean, rude, but telling them the truth because it would be the truth that will change them. I'd rather apologize when I see them in heaven than to walk into heaven and have that knowledge. Because when you enter heaven in your new body, you have all knowledge. You have access to everything. You'll have that knowledge of knowing I missed that person and I denied them the truth and they're right now being tormented. And I had a chance and I didn't do it. Now, if that person goes there because they didn't listen to what you said, that's a different story. That's on them. But the Bible tells us that you can mess up and not tell somebody the truth. And it may have been you that changed their mind by the message you delivered. That's why I don't pull my punches. That's why I talk about everything. That's why I bring everything to light. That's why I'm not popular. That's why I don't have a lot of people that watch my videos. Of the 13, 1400, however many it is now, I don't, I don't know. I turned that off. I can't even see it now. Of subscribers I have, only about... 150 watch my videos if that and that's fine I'm not doing this for that reason but it shows how unpopular I am and the message that I have because when you go and find the people who give the wrong message or give the feel good message or give the custom message not giving the full counsel of God they have thousands even hundreds of thousands of subscribers because that's what people want to hear. People don't want to hear the truth. When John the Baptist was alive, he was the only man on the earth that was doing those things. Only man on the earth proclaiming the truth. And they killed him for it. So I'm ready. I'm looking forward to it. Because the quicker I can leave, the quicker I can go be with the Lord. But I'm going to walk as much as I can according to his will with the last time I have on this earth. Now, could we go on another hundred years? Absolutely we could. We're on God's time, not ours. But I'm going to be prepared every day because you never know when any day could suddenly come and everything changes. And I don't want to be the one that has
has to stand there and in front of the Lord and have regret because I missed an opportunity to share the truth. And that's why I share as much of it as I can, even if it causes me problems. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory and to worship you for your holiness, for your greatness, for your majesty. What we see happening around the world today is nothing compared to what's coming. It's nothing compared to when you pour your wrath out on this earth. We thank you for that wrath because that fire is going to purge people. It's going to cause people to change. It's going to make people turn to you to realize the mistake they made and to make that decision for life. And you are ready to accept them. But right now what we have going on in the world is a travesty from a human standpoint of right and wrong. But you showed us and told us this was going to happen. You left us examples in the Bible. You spoke on this specifically and so did our Lord Jesus. You warned us of these things so we should not be surprised. Those that are in this world, their evil plans are open to everyone to see. But it's only those with the eyes that are open that can see it. You are purging out your people. You're cleansing out those who have a false confession. Those who, who look like wheat but are actually chaff. Those who have a profession and a proclamation and it's very elaborate and on for every intensive purposes looks like they fit the role of a Christian. Yet there's no salvation there. You're purging those people out because you're trying to, you're showing everyone, this is what I want. And that's what you want. Pick. And you're, you're showing who's picking what. I choose you. I choose the truth. I choose your word. I'm going to walk according to your will. My desire is not to be a part of this world and not to be a part of what's going on. It's to be a part of what you're doing and a part of heaven. As, as, as hard as it is living in this world and as much as, as the, the distractions are here, and as hard as it is to fight these temptations, my desire is for you. I want you. I don't want this. This is wrong. <clears throat> what's happening and what's going to happen today is wrong. What's coming in the future is wrong. But no matter what happens, I'm going to pick you, Father. We thank you for your word and thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your providence. And that you've opened our eyes to the truth. That you've given us access and glimpses into the true reality and not this construct that we live in here. That you've shown us our state and that we've turned it, we've accepted it, we agree with you. This is our state. We agree and we need you because we can't save ourselves and we can't help ourselves. And you have our salvation. You have our actual life in the palm of your hand. And we know we can rely on that. We can trust that. So if we trust in you, why are we worried about what this world does? When you told us this world was going to go this way specifically. We can have no greater blessing than you showing us the truth. So that we do not walk on and become punished. So that we are aware and prepared and settled in our hearts what's going to happen. And are not caught off guard. What a blessing it is to know the truth and to see what's happening and to say that that's it. And to be able to tell people. And right now, not many people are listening. And the ones that do, don't take it to heart. You are separating out your people. You are making a clear distinction between who belongs to you and who doesn't. And we are sitting here watching and waiting on you. We are standing and being silent and waiting, proclaiming your word, sharing your truth, and declaring to people the Lord Jesus and his salvation, the gospel. And, and what's, what amazes me is people hear these truths, see the words on the screen, and it still doesn't register to many people. And they still go on it and they live their lives living in the world as if nothing is wrong. 
calling themselves something that they're not. Living a life that is a lie. And we can't reach them. You are doing a work today in the world, Lord. You are exposing everything. You're taking the real agendas and you're laying them right out on the table for everyone to see. And we see them clearly. We know where we stand in this world. And it is not in a favorable place for the world. But it's in a favorable place for you. Father, strengthen us to stand in this truth and to proclaim these truths. Strengthen us so that we can be bold in your word. Strengthen us so that we will proclaim these truths for as long as we are here, up until the point that either they shut us up or you take us up. Lord, bring people back into the platform so that they will proclaim these things. Tell people these truths. Be bold. Be brave. And not hold back any of your word. But instead, tell them all of it. Even if it hurts. When a, when a surgeon is operating on someone and they have a, a large uh, a large laceration on their arm or their leg, they don't pat them on the back and tell them it's going to be okay. They don't, they don't put a bunch of uh, painkiller on it to, to numb it and just send them home. They have to cause them pain in order to end the pain. For most people, that doesn't make sense. Sometimes you've got to hurt someone to heal them. Sometimes you've got to push someone and cause them to fall down and become hurt and mad in order to save their life. You gave me that, that type of ministry. And many have changed, many have turned, many have responded. But many more haven't. And there's just not enough of us that are out there telling the truth. You've got a plan. You know what you're doing. You are doing a work. You're preparing as all the people who desire you and those who are willing to stand up, those who are willing to stand up for the truth, for you, for our Lord Jesus and for the gospel, are here standing up and doing the ministry you gave us. I pray you have mercy on us all. I pray you prepare us all for what's coming. This morning I'd like to pray Psalm 36. Man's, man's wickedness and God's perfections. And I will go within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There are workers of iniquity. There the workers of iniquity have fallen. They have been cast down and are not able to rise. Father, you have a judgment coming for those who deny you, for those who twist your words and use them for their personal gain, for those who choose the world over you. You have judgment coming. It's, it's here. We have aspects of your judgment happening already. And I'm seeing the moments where you take your hand back and get, get silent to see what we're going to do, those of us that are your people, to see if we're going to respond, if we're going to stand. You've been preparing us for two years, minimum, to stand when things get quiet. A lot of people just suddenly give up. 
because, oh, I don't hear the Lord anymore. I don't feel it anymore. What's going on? The world is convincing them that you're not real. And yet we know the difference. I know this is a temptation because this temptation hits me. And it's Satan. And he's attacking me every day when I'm sleepy or when I'm in pain. And he catches me at a weak moment and he attacks me with those things. And I push them back and tell them, no, no. I live off the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord says otherwise. So we fight. We have a little strength left. Let's use that little strength. Let's keep telling the truth. Father, strengthen us for that. Because we thank you for that. We thank you for this word. We thank you that we have the ability to still do this. We don't know how much longer it's going to go. But the fact is we still have opportunities. And people can still get saved. And seeds can still get planted. I'm not going to lie, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. We, we want to leave. Father, we, we're ready to go. When it's your will for us to go, we're ready. This world neither wants us, and we neither want this world. We desire you. We want a better place. We want a better life. We want to serve you in heaven. Because this, this is what it is. And man has done a very good job of messing it up. So, Father, thank you for your peace and love. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your word. Thank you for showing us these things, for bringing these things to life. I thank you for strengthening me every day to do what I do. As tired as I am and as much pain as I'm in, and the attacks have gotten very, very bad. I wake up every morning fighting these attacks. I wake up in the middle of the night fighting them. Because that's the only time he can attack me now. I've gotten to where I'm burning tons of energy just staying on guard at all times. Strengthen us to continue on. Strengthen us to finish the race. To keep going. And to keep proclaiming your truth. To anyone we can. In any way that we can. Because that is the only thing that is going to save. Thank you for your Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus. Your Son. Our Messiah, dying on the cross for us, giving us this ability to be saved. Thank you for giving us hope, something to look forward to, something to reach for, and to wait on, because in this world there's nothing, literally nothing, and the person at large, the general person walking around has no idea because they keep seeing that the world is going to get better and they keep proclaiming that the world is going to get better and what they don't know is it's going downhill so fast and they don't see it. And by the time they realize it, it'll be too late. Well, Lord, we realize it. Father, we see it because you've shown it to us. Thank you. Keep our eyes open. Keep our minds clear. Keep our hearts steadfast. And keep our proclamation of your truth always at the forefront of our conversation and help us to glorify you and to praise you and to give thanks to you every single day and help us turn to your word for everything thank you for your mercy and grace and thank you for your great love it is in jesus name we pray amen guys you have to make a decision do you want the lord or do you want the world for each one of us, personally, individually, in our personal connection and worship with the Lord, we have to make a decision. How much a part of this world do we want to be? How much do we want to be attached to it? How much do we want to partake of it? Because we're camping. We're in transient. We haven't reached our final destination. Because where we truly live, where we truly belong, is not here. It's somewhere else. So it is up to us to examine ourselves, look inward, see where we don't measure up according to God's word and make the changes, respond to his word, respond to the commands of Christ that tell us, walk this way, you will be blessed. And we have to stop listening to supposed Christians who tell us that's works, your, your teaching works. You're proclaiming works when the Bible clearly tells us what to do. If we do what God's word tells us what to do, we will be blessed beyond measure. I can attest to this because it is happening to me. Not happened, happening to me. 
All I can tell you is what I know. All I can tell you is what I've personally experienced. All I can proclaim to you is God's truth. He is active in my life and in the lives of the people around me because I see the effect. And while I see people who are attached to this world struggling, and I'm not struggling, and I don't make near as much money as they do, that's not smart business. That's God. And I give him the credit for that because he's the one helping us. He's the one blessing us, and I thank him so much for that. I can't do this. Here are these videos. I can't do this without him. I have to have him. I cannot do this unless he is there. My eyes are so blurry right now. How I'm able to see this psalm, I don't know. It is God working in those that love him. And he will continue to do so until the time comes when the day of redemption is at hand and we are delivered. And I, for one, am looking forward to that day. I love you all. I bless you all. Guys, go to the Lord and talk to him. Examine yourselves. Go to the Word and prove these things. It's so easy. It's so, so easy. And deny the world its prize. And instead, go to the one who really owns you. Go to the one who really cares about you and really loves you. You will be glad you did. I'll see you guys in the next video.